So today we are in High Fleet, and this is going to be a tips and tricks video for new players, uh, players that haven't played the game a lot. I'm going to assume for the purposes of this video that you have gone through the tutorial. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail there because that's an existing built-in tutorial in the game. But I'm going to focus on a couple of things that the tutorial doesn't really make clear, and it's definitely going to help you with the initial stages of the game. So let's get straight into it. So when you start a new game, after you've completed the initial little introduction, which you only have to do the first time you play the campaign, unless you want to replay that, you're going to be met with this screen. And this is the first place where it can be a little bit overwhelming for new players because you have all of these different ships that you can choose from and it's not really clear which ones you should be selecting. Now, there's no one correct loadout that you should be choosing, but there's a couple of things that I want to make clear that's really going to make a difference in terms of how you approach this. So what you've got to keep in mind is that this is your main ship up here, the flagship, which has got a bunch of systems on it, and it's also got a lot of fuel tanks. Every other ship that you're going to add in here is going to take fuel as you're traveling. So that's effectively going to reduce the range that you have. Now, this is the most important thing that you need to understand here is that any ship that you're adding here, not only does it reduce the range, but it's also burning up more fuel for the same amount of distance that you're traveling. And what that's going to mean is more money that you have to spend refueling your ships and more time that you have to spend refueling those ships. And both of those things can have a pretty big impact on your campaign as you're playing. Uh, and this is where you really have to figure out what is the bare minimum that you require initially, because if you're entering a battle, you can only take one ship in at a time. So say, for example, and what I would usually recommend is taking two or three of these lightning ships. Uh, now, this is going to reduce my range, but nowhere near as much as some of these uh, ships like the Gladiator, which is a lot heavier um, and therefore uses a lot more fuel as well. And the thing is that usually if I'm fighting a battle, one or two of these in the early stages of the game is going to be enough to win the battle. Very often it's going to be just one of them. And then you have a third one as well in case one of these gets shot down and then you still have two shot, uh, ships, one that can back up the other one. Now you may be asking the question, okay, why would you take something like the lightning and we'll just sort of um, remove them here again. Why would we take this interceptor if we can take something like the gladiator, which has a lot more weapons on it, it has flares on it to help you with missiles and so on, and it has a lot more armor as well. Well, as I said, the most important thing here is that the gladiator is going to take a lot more fuel for you to just sort of carry that around. And if you, you know, for example, if I have these two ships, but this one is sufficient to take ships out, the second one that I have here is really just burning up fuel. But the Gladiator has a couple of other problems as well. The biggest one is, and let me just go back here, if you look at these numbers, the thrust to weight, um, the Gladiator has a significantly lower thrust to weight compared to the Lightning. And in fact, that's true for most of the other ships that you see here. The Lightning has an incredibly high thrust to weight uh, ratio. And what that means is you can almost entirely avoid enemy fire. So if it's a trade-off between having something like the Gladiator, which can withstand hits better versus something like the lightning which can potentially completely avoid hits altogether that means that you don't have to spend so much time and money repairing your ship and that's a pretty big advantage to have now you've got to understand that it is going to take some time for you to get used to avoiding enemy fire but it's going to be so much easier to do that within the lightning and it's a cheaper ship overall so it's uh, you can afford to have more of these and as i said it takes less fuel as well on top of that there's another big benefit because the Lightning is an interceptor, because it's so fast, it's got a bigger range, it's got bigger speed, it means that when you're going to be chasing down enemy transport ships, and you do this by figuring out where they are through intel and then intercepting radio messages, um, it's a lot easier for the Lightning to catch up to these ships. And once they do, usually what the transport ships are going to try to do is to get away from these interceptor ships that you have. But they're not going to be able to get away from the Lightning ships because they are so fast. So with all of that said, uh, these are the reasons why I wouldn't advise that you take any of these other ships. Like I said, there's no one correct loadout, but using the Lightning is just going to be so much easier. And I'm also going to show you how to make this Lightning a little bit more powerful uh, as you get into the first combat situations. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about before we get into the combat is just when you start out, you have a lot of different options in terms of where you want to go. 
Now, the way I usually approach this is if I've done everything that I needed to do. So there is an objective here. We need to uh, meet with the Tarkins. We obviously want to go and do that. Uh, but aside from that, you need to figure out what's important right now. Do you need to fix ships? Do you need to buy new modules? Uh, have you lost ships and you need to get uh, mercenaries or do you need to refuel? And of course, you know, you can go to these um, purchase reinforcement areas where you can uh, replace ships if you've lost some. If you need to do repairs, it's best to go to a place where you can do those quickly. Uh, likewise, if you want to do a big refuel, so for the small refuels, just to get to your next destination, you can do that anywhere. But if you want to do a big refuel, I would recommend going to one of these uh, fuel depots. And um, then in all other situations, if you have nothing else to do, I would usually recommend going to an enemy intel center because that'll allow you to track down things like transport ships. But for now, because our fuel is a little bit on the lower side, uh, we are going to go and get some fuel first. And we're also going to try to get some additional ammo. And I'll demonstrate here uh, some of the tactics in terms of using these highly maneuverable ships to uh, engage in combat as well. So when you get this prompt, you should pretty much always prepare the strike group. The thing is, if you take your main ship, that is going to uh, cause an alert, uh, which you don't want to deal with. Aside from the fact that the main ship isn't very maneuverable, it's incredibly effective at taking down enemies, but you're almost always going to sustain damage. And that's why I have a preference for the lighter, more maneuverable ships, which you can avoid taking damage altogether or just take very little damage. But in this case, yes, we do want to prepare a strike group. He has already selected our smaller ships and the big one we're going to leave behind so we're just going to go ahead and send these forward okay so currently we only have to deal with one of these now technically this ship i think that we're fighting is meant to be a little bit stronger than the ones we have but as i said ours is more maneuverable and we should be able to avoid taking any shots So we're going to fly directly down towards the enemy here if he tries to shoot us we're really just going to try to get out of the way as quickly as possible let's just do that and as you can see, he didn't get a single hit on us there, uh, which is one of the benefits of having something that's this maneuverable. We're going to try to get in below him if we can. Okay, let's just get out of the way here for avoiding his fire. The reason why the screen is going dark is because of the G-forces. That's one of the downsides of having something that's this maneuverable. Sometimes it is worth trying to get below the enemy because um, they may not have as much armor there. But you really have to check out each ship. Okay, now we've got him. We've just achieved victory here and we didn't take any damage to our ship, which is ideal. It's not always going to be the case, but um, that really helps out. So as you can see, we didn't get any damage on any of our ships, so it doesn't really matter which one we're going to land here. I would usually recommend that you don't try to land the sort of headquarter cruiser because it's just incredibly difficult to land it. Um, it doesn't have very good thrust to rate, weight ratio, plus it's huge, so you can't always find good places to set it down. Um, now, I'm going to land this one in one of the best spots, but I don't really need to because I don't have any damage and we're going to, not going to need to work on it. Uh, so, but these uh, ships, this is another advantage. They're pretty maneuverable. Um, actually, this is a very tight spot that I'm trying to get it into here, uh, but that makes them very easy to land as well without, you know, causing any sort of damage or anything like that. So that's a very soft landing there. So I'm just going into the ship works to talk about something that I didn't talk about. Another advantage that this ship has over things like the Gladiator. So part of what you're paying for with the Gladiator are these missiles that gets mounted on the sides of the ship. Now those are really effective at taking the enemy down, but there's also a big problem with having them because you are paying for them and it's very difficult to find ammunition to replace those missiles. And generally, if you're going to use those ships in combat, what's going to happen is you're going to have to fire those missiles because if you don't and the enemy fires at you, it could detonate the, the missiles on your ship, which you obviously don't want. So this is just another reason why I think this ship's a better deal. Uh, those missiles don't really make a lot of sense in the early game. You don't need them to take enemies down. It's not that they're not effective. It's just that there are better ways of doing that in the early game. 
So now we're going to get into the supplies. Now, ideally, we want to buy as much fuel as we can here. We do want to be careful because if you stay in the same location for too long, then eventually they're going to start tracking you down. So, you know, I'm just going to go for maybe about 4,000 tons here. We'll see how we are on time and then we might buy some more. We can always come back to buy more. Uh, but the next thing I want to talk about is buying this ammunition. Now, um, this is really, really important. I didn't mess with this too much at the beginning of the game. You really should. You should experiment with the different types of ammunition because it can make a big difference. So the ship that I have, and I'll go back to show you how I know this, but it's got 100 millimeter cannons on it. And these proximity fuse uh, ammunition is, it is incredibly uh, powerful. So I'm going to buy as much of this as I can. Yes, you know, it does cost a bit. It's going to cost me about 5,000. It's actually not that bad if you consider how much money it's potentially saving you by ending battles really early before the enemy has a chance to start doing damage to you. So that's a really good one to have. The other one is I'm also going to buy some of the um, incendiary ammo. So this is the one that sets the enemies on fire when you're uh, firing at them. That's a good backup as well for when I run out of the other one. Now, just I'm going to go back to the ship works. The reason why I know that I need to buy 100 millimeters is because when you hover over the guns, you'll see that it says this is a 100 millimeter um, cannon. Uh, it's the same for any other weapon system. So if I go over here to the main ship, you can sort of hover over and you can see this one is a 57 millimeter twin cannon. And you can sort of go through the whole ship and see how you need to outfit this one. But because we only have the lightning ships, because they all only have two cannons and it's the same one, we know exactly what we need to buy. Because we're intercepting a radio signal here. Let's just have a look. So I'm selecting the channel. Now I can click and drag this to quickly try to get to the right channel. And then you can use the scroll bar to fine tune. This is an update that they brought after the original release. And I'm really glad they did because it just makes this so much uh, more intuitive to do. So we're going to get the message here. Now, originally, when you get message, you'll see messages, you'll see that it is not encrypted. You can see, um, you know, who the message is being sent to, who it's sent from. All of this information is potentially useful. But the only other thing that you need to be aware of is eventually the enemy is going to start encrypting their messages. And this is where you're going to use the cipher key. So you're going to get these little scraps of paper that you can match into this block here. And it's going to give you these four numbers. So and this could be anything from basically zero to I think a hundred and uh, the way this works is once you can see some of these numbers so let's say this one's a 22 and this one is a 19 just for argument's sake then you'll just put 22 in here using the scroll bar and 19 in here and once you have all four of these dials tuned in you'll basically effectively be deciphering the enemy's messages so that's just something don't know if the tutorial explains that too well but that's just something you need to be aware of once they start encrypting messages so we are now fully fueled and I'm going to go on to the next city that I want to just get into some combat to show you how well this other ammunition that I've just bought works if you're engaging uh, the enemy in the early game Okay, so in this situation, we are facing three enemies here. Now, this should be quite tough given that we have these light ships, but we are going to equip these ships with the proximity fuse ammunition. At least the first one, the other two, I'm going to give the incendiary ammunition. We're going to see how this goes. So hopefully this one can take down all of them without being shot. But having three of them on us, that is going to make it very difficult. The huge benefit of having the proximity fuse is that you don't need to land all of your shots because the uh, the shots basically detonate before they hit the target and that makes it a little bit easier to hit your target and also makes it easier to take them down. So you're going to see just how effective this is as we're getting into the combat here. So I'm on the left hand side. Um, okay, it's just giving me the hint on how to switch ammunition type but we don't need to switch. We're immediately going to start firing and see we've already taken down one of them okay now we need to go a bit fast to try and avoid the fire here uh, we're going to go in the other direction to try and avoid the missile and again that's the benefit of having a ship like this second one's down we haven't taken a single hit yet we're going to go a bit fast again and that's it we've taken all three out not a single shot landed on us and again this is why i say that these lightning ships, yes, they don't have a lot of armor on them. If you know how to avoid the enemy's fire, 
it doesn't matter. They have to first land shots on your craft for the armor to actually make a difference. And because these are so fast, it's really easy to try and avoid the enemy's fire. It will change later on in the game, but for the early game, this is a really, really good option. So now that we've captured the enemy's intel center, we can basically use this intel that we have to get information on some of their ships. Now, if you move up from the trade ships to some of the ships that can do combat as well, that gets more expensive. So this is how much you basically have to pay for this intel. But you'll see, for example, if I just click on the trade ships, I'm going to click on one of these that goes down to four and that has now put a trade ship on here. So we can see that this trade ship is called Sparrowhawk. It is currently going to move over here and that already gives me some really good intel that I should try to intercept it over here. Now we don't know exactly that it's gonna be here at the time that we get there, but this is where you also intercept the radio signals because since we know that this one is now called the Sparrowhawk, when we intercept a message from the Sparrowhawk, we'll know what its new location is or at least have some approximation of what its new location is. I'm also gonna look for some of the other ships here. So this one, uh, okay, so, these are missile carriers, it seems. And uh, let's just have another one. This is an aircraft carrier group as well. So we'd wanna avoid these ideally, but we know that there is a transport ship down here and this is the one that we ideally want to try and intercept. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can do that here. Okay, so now we can see that there is a transport ship here. Now, I don't have any of my other ammo left, so we're going to have to use the incendiary ammo. We don't want to harm the prize ship. It is going to be attacking us, but we want to take out its, its escort as, as fast as possible. And um, that's not always going to be easy to do, but we'll, we'll need to see what we can do here. So we're going to just try and get out of the way. Get down, get down. Okay. see if we can lure that weapon to destroy this one. Okay, that's not good. It's one down. Let's try to tag in the other ship here instead of taking more damage on this one. Oh no, there we go. Try and position ourselves between these two ships. That was very, very close. Taking a lot of hits here. Not doing so well in this one. Yeah, this fight was a little bit tougher, but we did manage to secure the transport ship. So basically we do the same thing that we always do. We're going to uh, search some of these facilities, um, get the fuel tank secured, disassemble the hull, and we're going to fly all of these back uh, towards this base. And basically we almost got 15,000 gold for that. So a really good payout. And uh, we're going to go ahead and land some of these ships now. So those are my beginner tips for a high fleet. I hope this helps you. As I said, there's a lot more that you can learn about this game. But I think just knowing how to set up your fleet at the start of the game, what ammunition to use, and how to use that additional maneuverability to avoid getting damage uh, and just basically use a smaller fleet as well to avoid wasting fuel can really help you get a leg up in the early parts of the campaign. Um, and if you do like this content, as always, do like and subscribe and I'll see you for the next video.